For the first time in my SSD reviewing career, I have a drive in front of me that is entirely made in China. This is the Orico IG740 Pro, a full fat PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD, and in this video we're going to take a look at it, put it through its paces, and see if it's worth buying over the western options. Although, let's be real, those aren't really western as they're mostly made in the eastern hemisphere too, but at least by western companies. First, a tour. This isn't the first Arico drive that I've tested, that would be the E5000, a more mid-tier Gen 4 drive that just doesn't make much sense in terms of performance, but unlike that one, this does come with a heatsink in the box, it's just a thin bit of folded sheet metal with a spare thermal pad included for good measure in the box, alongside a screwdriver that even has a spinny base for easier use, and a screw that will work with precisely one motherboard, and good luck finding out which one that would be. The heatsink isn't really worth installing unless your motherboard doesn't have one of its own. If it doesn't, then, well, yeah, you will want to use it, because this thing can get toasty. Even by Orico's measurements, you're looking at a hefty and thermally throttled temperature, so yeah, this needs cooling one way or another. The heatsink won't do that much though, as uh, other than really just acting as a, a heat soaker, it's not going to help dissipate a huge amount of heat like a larger heatsink, especially one with fins, might. The drive itself is a single-sided 2280 form factor, and a peek under the sticker reveals the magic. This is a DRAM-less drive, but the unique part here is that the controller, a Musray Maxio MAP1602 from mid-2023, and the flash made by Yangtze Memory Con uh, Technology Company are both made by, and at least to my knowledge, made in China. And just to top it off, at least as of writing this, you can only buy this from AliExpress. A true China special then. That controller is pretty much in line with the other NVMe uh, 2.0 controllers, claiming 7.4 gigabytes per second on reads and 6.5 gigabytes per second on writes. Although that doesn't have, uh, doesn't even have the option to have a DRAM cache, even if you wanted to. They claim SLC-like burst performance, that's the 6.5 gigabytes per second figure, and also direct to TLC writes for great sustained performance. We're going to test that. As for the NAND flash, that's YMTC's X-Tacking 3.0 3D NAND flash from 2022, so nothing here is super new, but to be fair, people like Lexar with their NM790 drive have this same setup, so it isn't exactly unique, but it is the first time I've seen it, so let's take a look at the performance. First up, the synthetic benchmarks. Crystal Disk Mark normally shows as the best case scenario results, and here we get a hair under 7.1 gigabytes per second in reads and 6 gigabytes per second in writes. That's 300 megabytes per second lower than the claimed figure on reads and 500 megabytes per second on writes, although to be fair that's still pretty typical, and at least on read performance, it's up there with some of the better drives on the market. Write performance isn't as strong, although it's still on par with some of the full fat Gen 4 drives. Interestingly, with a lower Q depth, the IG740 actually climbs in the charts with balanced read and write performance. Considering something like the Crucial P310, the 2230 version, not that that really matters, offers better write performance but worse read performance, I'd kind of call that even. With a random 4 kilobyte block and a Q depth of 32, you'll find the IG40 topping my charts here with over 1 gigabyte per second in reads and nearly 900 megabytes per second in writes, over 100 megabytes per se uh, second faster than the fastest drive I've tested so far. Not bad, huh? Lastly for Crystal Disk Mark, the same block size but with a Q depth of 1, the IG40 drops back to the middle of the pack, with a still very respectable result. It's shaping up to be a remarkably decent drive despite the lack of a DRAM cache. AS SSD has similar top end sets of results, with the IG40 sitting at 5.2GB per second in writes and 5.6GB per second in reads. 
ASSSD always reports slower figures than crystal disk marks, so those numbers make sense. It also makes sense in the standings, albeit a little slower than the other NVMe 2.0 drives that I've tested. With a random 4 kilobyte block size, again we see the IG740 strength, coming in second on writes, although the reads aren't quite as strong. Still, it's a good result. The same test again, but with 64 threads, shows a completely opposite picture, with the IG740 offering the second to slowest performance I've seen, only beating out its Arico sibling, the E5000. The Sabrent drives offer almost double the right performance here, and the read performance isn't much better. Some drives are almost a gigabyte per second faster. ATTO offers us a look at what performance from each block size, from 512 bytes to 64 megabytes, looks like, and while the read performance at the top end does match the fastest drives I've tested, the strange dip at 64, 128, and 256 kilobytes is, well, strange. The right performance is also the most unstable I've tested, although at least it is worlds better than the E5000 with its frankly terrible read performance. As for real world file transfers, copying from the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus G, we get a respectable 3 gigabytes per second or so on average. This isn't the fastest that I've seen. The Crucial P310, an also DRAMless drive, copied almost 4 gig or 4.5 gigabytes per second from the same source, but 3 gigabytes isn't bad for sure. Duplicating those files I think is the fastest that I've seen at around 2.5 gigabytes per second on average, at least initially. Copying around 100 gigabytes our sets of data also gives us a good way to see how the performance drops once the SLC cache has been filled up and how much data you need to put on the drive for that to happen. It turns out it's around 500 gigabytes or so for this drive. That isn't bad, although that means that performance is likely to drop off the more you use and fill the drive. The bare NAND performance here is also uh, somewhat problematic. As soon as the cache space ran out, it dropped to running anywhere between 2 megabytes per second and maybe 200 at a push. This is really pretty terrible performance. This is slower than a mechanical hard drive at these speeds, and for good measure I duplicated it again to see what it'd do, and for almost a minute it sat at 0 megabytes per second while hardware info reported 100% write activity. I genuinely thought I'd found out that the capacity here was fake, but happily it did continue, at least at the 2 to 200 megabytes per second uh, mark though. That's not exactly ideal. For context, when the Crucial P310 ran out of SOC cache, it was anywhere from 30 to 750 megabytes per second, with most of that performance being at 300 megabytes per second or higher. While that still isn't exactly the 6 or 7 gigabytes per second that's advertised, it's still considerably better than this IG740. As with all things, there isn't really a bad product, only a bad price. So if this thing is notably cheaper than even something like the P310, well, then this is still a decent choice. And it's not. This 2 terabyte version, even from AliExpress, is £110 when you add on the tax. That's the same price as the 2280 version of the P310 and a number of other 7GB per second rated Gen 4 SSDs. As I said in the E5000 video, these sort of unknown and less performant drives need to be priced lower than their well-known, reputable and faster competitors to have any chance of being competitive. If this was £90, which is the excluding VAT price, this might be a compelling choice as it offers similar performance to drives like the P310 while offering a decent price incentive to try it out. As it stands though, I don't know why you'd buy this over the myriad of other options on the market. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the IG740 Pro? Is it a drive you're interested in? Would you pick up something like the P310 instead, or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to check this out, I will do my best to leave a link in the description, and I'll also leave a link to the P310, since I've mentioned that 
so many times in this video, and that'll be in the description. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon, check out plenty of other videos on the end cards, and check out my own hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tools at osrtt.com, and that's linked in the description too. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.